Hello there and welcome to Chitta Diaries, welcome to my channel for my subbies, <laughs> welcome to this video, welcome back. So today is part two of this month Chitta Chat series which is essentially delving into some aspects or issues in our life that you know might affect my, might, that might affect our mental health and I will be giving you like some, yeah just some story time, some advice, some of my... <laughs> Yeah, like views based off of my perspective. And let me tell you, like it's been hot in Zambia. Like right now it's blazing. It's it's September, it's early September, but it's so hot. Like I can only film <laughs> between like 22 hours to like 2 a.m. in the morning because that's when like, you know, it's a like it's a bit cooler. And I was watching this this reel, or the, or, I think it was a reel or a TikTok of some old lady saying she needs to get her life in order. <laughs> because this like 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 this heat <laughs> even though she was in zambia but i'm but it was pretty much the same thing but she's just like this heat has made me realize that i don't want to be in hell so i'm getting my life together and i laugh so hard because yeah i could relate to that it's been so hot so yes welcome to this video today i, I want to have some order i don't want to ramble too much so if i look down i have notes in my notepad so that i try and stay <laughs> on track and yes today i am talking about friendship i'm talking about seasons of friendship types of friendships my experience as a friend the type of friends that i have like i would try and be as as not really broad because broad sounds like vague but yes i'll try to be as comprehensive on this topic as possible because i feel like it's very very important for me to talk about friendship on my my journey okay thus far in my 20 20 <laughs> in my 31 years of living yes i truly value the friends that i have i've also learned a lot from friends who have come and gone in the past but yes let's get into it as i said i wasn't going to ramble today so i am someone who like i always joke about how i am a friend whore <laughs> I know it might sound ridiculous, and I think my title would even be something along the lines of being a friend or it might, it might look clickbaity for people who don't know me. But once you watch the video, like I'm actually not even trying to be clickbait people. Like I am being <laughs> legit when I tell you that I joke about how I am a friend whore. And if you watch part one, part one kind of explains why I have so many friends. Like I have collected so many friends. <laughs> along the way and i've kept them that i'm not even someone who has a best friend like i am always in awe at people who have one solid best friend there was this show called the, the mindy project with mindy kaling but but the character in that show was called mindy lahiri and if you guys are my age and ever watch that show like yeah like like, like that show was hilarious highly recommend but mindy lahiri once said um best friend is is not an individual person okay best friend is a tier of friendship okay there's acquaintances there's friends there's close friends and then there's like a whole tier or, or a whole level at least for me and people like mindy lahiri where best friend is a level of friendship like it's a tier in including like and it includes multiple people who qualify as best friends and that's the type of person that i am i'm also somebody who in the past even though like i have actively or being consciously trying to <laughs> trying to do better but i'm one of those annoying or i used to be one of those annoying high maintenance friends but i'm but i'm i'm, I'm trying to be better like i'm trying to be chill <laughs> and i think i've tried yes uh, as i grow older but yes i am someone who is a proper friend, friend whore and the older that i get i've come to realize that when, that when people say it's better to have a smaller circle and have quality friends instead of quantity like they honestly mean it and i'm learning from people like that who endorse that because like like it's a lot of work it's a lot of drama sometimes because they're dealing with so many people but yeah once you get to a point where you're my age okay and you have far less tolerance for a lot of things and you just know yourself as a person like you've grown and you know who you are because you on like honestly everybody has to go through a phase where they discover themselves but once you know who you are like you'd be good and hopefully you'll be able to see about certain people and just keep those who are good <laughs> so yeah that's like my general intro with regards to friendship now 
I had a conversation with one of my brothers not too long ago. And I didn't even know how this came up. But he talked about how he saw someone or heard someone online talk about different types of friends. And I was like, wow, like I love that. <laughs> and I joked about how like I, was, like I was going to write it down or take notes of it and use it in one of my videos. And, and that video has come that like today is the day. And I'm basically plagiarizing this. I, I have no idea where he heard this or saw this. But someone, okay, not my cat snoring in the background. I'm so sorry if you can hear her snoring. But in her defense, it's like 1am right now. But yes. So my brother told me about how there's different types of friends. There's friends for a season. There's friends for a reason. And then there's friends for life. And I was like, I love that. I love that. I know, and I know exactly what you're talking about. Even as he was elaborating, like I was nodding my head and I was like, yes, yes, all of that is very valid. So <laughs> I will start with friends for a season. And like, if you aren't, you know, like um, for those for those of you who aren't new to my channel, like, like you know, I love to give a story. I love to give an analogy <laughs> because I feel like, like, like it helps, you know, like, you know, what I'm saying flow. But yes, again, I remember hearing this from someone else, but they were referring to what you find attractive through the phases of your life. Like when you're a kid and you have a, a, a question of boy, like you, like, like your type <laughs> is something very, very silly and childish. When you become a teenager for some teen girls, it's very like, you know, it's like where like you want, you know, like the like the cool kid or the, or the kid who's very, very attractive. And then when you get into college or your early 20s, you now want someone, you know, maybe like it, it, it becomes more than looks. Like you want somebody who has money, who can give you stuff, who is like it's, it's kind of materialistic. And then as you get older, late 20s, early 30s, that's when people tend to get married, settle down and start families. So now what attracts you is somebody who can be a, a good life partner and the older that you get everything else that you know might have been at the, at the top of your list before now becomes you know secondary and now you just want a good companion and in this like in the same way in the same vein I, like that's the way seasons of friendship work <laughs> and i felt like that analogy or story was like the best way i could explain friends for a season and that's the first category so it's very very true like i had this conversation with one of my friends and we had a good laugh okay okay i had a good laugh because i was just like i've asked myself after you know thinking about that or, or just learning about friends for a season and i must have heard this on a podcast or something but somebody was like if you met your like like friends who you met when you were five or friends who you met when you were 15 like if, okay, if you're my age if you're in your 30s if you met some of your oldest friends today and like it was the first time that you were meeting them would you be friends with them and for a lot of us the answer would be no because like we're in different places in our life and anyways like like i i, I will i will expand on, on this on a, for a bit, like later on in a bit but yes that was a very very funny point to make but it's also very very true when you're kids you probably meet your friends in school or in, in your neighborhood and what attracts you to these friends is sorry there's like a fly or a mosquito hovering around I, I hope that's not bothering you but yes but what attracts you to is, is a certain type of friend when you're a child you might just like them because maybe you 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 have, you have the same hobbies as kids like you like playing the same games you, 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 like yeah but it's 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 cute and innocent stuff and maybe yeah like it's just somebody who you enjoy playing with like that's what makes them you know a good friend you, that you'd want to have or keep when you get into your teen years maybe it's hobbies maybe it's music shows things that you know like the youth enjoy like that's what draws you to a person like it's usually hobbies and interests at that age when you get into college and your early 20s and now like i'm talking about the friends that i've made like along the way college and the like because you're in college because you've picked a major like you're now thinking about your career so the friends that you make in college like yes you, you might be there for vibes and a good time but essentially you are now at a different stage mentally where 
like 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 college is hard or university is hard and the people who you bond with or the people who you stay with like understand what you're going through like <laughs> so yeah in that season of your life where you need friends to get you through college same thing when you when you now enter employment or whatever it is that you may be you now start to get into a yeah in a new season of your life where you make friends where you identify who you want you know in a workspace or in a certain industry that you've entered in like that's who you want to surround yourself with who you want to be with and let me tell you this the older that you get okay because i'm 31 you might be younger watching this the older that you get unfortunately you become a very very opportunistic person <laughs> like the the older that you get like if you're somebody who's still making friends later on in life it becomes a very very intentional choice like the only people who you're going to pair up with and like it's rarely about feelings the older that you get it's more about you know how somebody can either better you or can grow with you <laughs> like very rarely do you make friends for vibes you end up being attracted to people who can elevate you because you're at a point in your life where you're also trying to elevate yourself so you go through these different seasons in your life you have your childhood season you have your teenage season you have your 20s season you have you know when you like for, for, like for those who you know get married sit down have, like like start to have families you have that season of your life you have that season of, of yeah but ho hopefully that makes sense so you end up accumulating friends during these seasons now for the most part a lot of these friendships that you make during these different seasons of, of your life are only for that season okay <laughs> and this is where like i wanted to give like my first <laughs> point okay as to, as to why like i've been excited to do this video because i am somebody who struggled with this i was a friend hoarder i was a friend whore i don't know what, what other word to use i wanted every single person who i met along the way to stay in my life like like, like as long as i like them and they like me even if they had entered a different season we had you know like like reached a a road where now like there are different turns my friend goes this way my friend goes that way we're now walking you know in, in a parallel way in life but i wanted them to come over onto my lane like stay in my lane please <laughs> you know like stick here with me like that season had ended but i had this need okay to always want <laughs> to keep people around even though they were just there for a season and now that i'm older i have come to learn that sometimes it is important to let people go i have mourned the end of several friendships in the past but it needed to be done okay because they were just there for a season so these are the so in my case the friends for a season are the type of friends who i assumed i was going to be best friends with for the rest of my life <laughs> that season ended we moved on now there's friends for a reason friends for a reason like i think this mosquito friends for a reason i think is an easier friendship for me to embark on because like everything is clear from the start and my brother elaborated on, on this for me maybe it might be somebody who you meet at work like you work in the same department or something like y'all are bonding <laughs> in that environment and that's it like when you go home you go about your lives like you're not going to carry that friend with you like for, for, the, for the most part like that's where it ends and it might be a friend in a social group, like maybe a, like, 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 like you have a hobby, maybe you're in fitness clubs. Like those are just your friends in your fitness club, like they aren't spilling into your personal life. <laughs> now, some people blur the lines even there where you meet someone for a reason, but you want them, you know, to be in your personal life. Because <laughs> like I said, the theme of this month's videos is mental health chats. Okay, so I just want to help somebody who might be struggling like i used to so you can be chill and just <laughs> calm down and realize that it's not that deep for every single friend that you make it's a friend for a reason when that reason is no longer you know uh needed or it's or it's come to an end let people go <laughs> let people go and sometimes you might have friends who are delulu like i was like like maybe you aren't the, the delusional one maybe it's your friend who is a delusional one be kind and 
just I don't know like help them <laughs> release you so that if so that you can both you know continue on the new paths that you know that, that you are going to embark on. So that's friends for a reason, and now there's friends for life. These actually do exist, and I do have friends for life. The people in my life right now who I know are friends for life. They are friends in the current season that I'm in. And I also have friends that are friends for a reason. Like I know. <laughs> like I know I have a hundred friends, but I know where each person, you know, falls. And it's a very, very good thing to do if you want to have if you want to have peace. If you want to have peace of mind. Okay. <laughs> if you want to okay, this mosquito is going to end me. But yes. As I was saying. I have now identified, you know, who these friends are so that I can live a far better <laughs> life. It's at peace. Like I'm not struck, like I'm not overthinking scenarios because it does come to that sometimes. Like, like you end up overthinking something. No, this person isn't doing this for me because, you know, you do the most for them. Like you're the delusion one, like I used to be. And I would be somebody who would make friends and I would be at a level 10. Like I was a 10 out of 10 friend for them. But there would be a 4 out of 10 friend for me because I was their friend for a reason. <laughs> or a friend for a season and that season had ended. But yeah, I was in a deep state of the Lulu. But anyways, let me now focus on friends for life. Friends for life, like it's very, like, like, like you're able to I, I identify them in different ways. It's different for every person. But I have some friends for life. And... <laughs> They are my, like, they are friends who I met during childhood. And by the way, I had so many friends that I met in childhood who, like, during childhood who, I, who are not my friends anymore. Like, we're just acquaintances or people who, like, we knew each other, like, you know, when we were kids and we moved on with our lives. Like, like, like we don't even talk to each other, and, but it's okay. But if we met on the street, we'd hug each other, say hi, and we'd move on. But I do have some friends from childhood. I have, like, one or two from college. I have one or two who I met at work because I have worked for a particular company for about nine years now. So like, and I spend most of my time there. Like I have picked up some friends along the way who I know will be friends for life. Okay. And even if they aren't friends for life, like it happens, some people fall off, like it's okay. But you know, sometimes along the way, during a season or during a reason, you will find somebody who ends up sticking with you for life. <laughs> so Yes. I don't like this feels like a lecture, so, <laughs> but I hope, I don't know, like you're enjoying this. I hope so. I hope so. So yeah, what, what was the next point that I was going to make after this? So yes, now that <laughs> we've established the different types of friends and I wanted to talk about um, friends who you have to let go and elaborate further on that, you know, for, again, for the sake of your mental health. Because it really, it really is that deep sometimes. And then friends who are keepers. <gasps> you guys, like, like, I can never catch mosquitoes. Like I have a sister and a brother who just, they can even kill a, a mosquito with one hand. Anyways, like it's taunting me. Like I'm so, by the way, <laughs> if you're new. <laughs> yes, I am African. <laughs> we have flies and mosquitoes. And yeah, it's a lot. But anyways, um... I will now talk about friends that you need to get rid of. <laughs> As I am looking at, at this mosquito that, that, that I need to get rid of. But yes, just in case you didn't know, just in case you are struggling, I am here to help you out. In case you're wondering, like, I'm not somebody who, like, who would want to, to tell people how to live their life. But just in case you're looking for somebody to tell you what to do, <laughs> yes, I, like, 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 I will gladly do it. So now, when it comes to friends... Who you, need, who you need to get rid of. It might be friends you might have identified as friends for life who are now, you know, uh, bordering on being toxic or, or who are toxic, or whether it's a, it's a friend for a season or a friend for a reason who you just need to shed. Here are a couple of examples <laughs> of people who you need to be aware of because I have been through it. But then for some extremes, thank goodness I have not been through it, but I've seen other people experience this and it's been very, very sad. Okay. And very, very sad and very, very, very tragic. And like, let me tell you this, 
like sometimes we watch films it might be any, okay but i feel like nollywood films <laughs> sometimes we might laugh and think they're doing the absolute most especially old school nollywood but the order that i've gotten you guys like those hilarious and ridiculous characters are legit based on true stories like i have seen real life nollywood villains in some people's lives who call themselves people's friends like it's actually wild out here and just because you are someone who would never do that to somebody else, never forget that there's somebody out there who is very, very capable of doing absolutely horrific things to people. <laughs> there are villains who exist in this here life and you need to have your guard up. Like, don't walk around, like, you know, being absolutely paranoid, thinking everybody's is out to get you and have invisible haters. But I'm not saying be that extreme person, but also, like, just also be wise, okay? And, you know have like just have like your guard up like maybe up to like a level here not, not all the way up but just a level up, like like have some sort of you know it's about safe here <laughs> but just beware sometimes like have your your guard up slightly and don't just completely open yourself up and be and always be a hundred percent trusting like people like there's some mad people walking this earth so yeah i will talk about the first type of friend who you have to be aware of and and hopefully get rid of so this one is the jealous friend so and this is like the easiest person <laughs> to, to, to talk about and i feel like everybody knows or has experienced a, a, a jealous friend some of us have been a jealous friend i will I, i'll be the first person to raise my hand where i've had moments where i feel jealous but i'm i but i don't think i am somebody who has <laughs> done mad things maybe it was just bad energy and that's what most of and that's what most jealous friends you know do like the most they can do is just channel negative energy towards you and energy like it can affect your life like it can honestly affect your life i like i believe okay in protecting one energy you may not even know that somebody despises you but just because that in your personal life in your space Sometimes things might, things might may not be going, going well for you. Not, not, not that they are actively sabotaging you, but just the fact that they have bad energy and bad wishes towards you. Sometimes things just don't work out. And yeah, and, and, and that's why people say, or elders say, don't tell everybody your plans, etc. whatnot. It's because of people with bad energy. <laughs> so yes, when it comes to jealous friends, these are people who, who like, <laughs> will always talk you down. If you look nice, if you accomplish something, whatever something good is happening in your life, it makes them uncomfortable. Like, like, like I said, like, like we've all had somebody, you know, who, who's had a jealous friend or has been a a, a jealous friend. But I'll, I'll I'll talk about when it's when when you're the problem <laughs> later on. But yes, if it's your friend who is jealous, like the the telltale sign is when they can never celebrate a win in your life. Even when you're telling them something, like it's gotten to a point where you know that if you have good news, you they they, they aren't the first. Oh, I caught one, <laughs> but I know that there's there's one more mos mosquito flying around. It's a situation where when you have so something good happen to you, they they aren't the first person who you want to tell. Like you need to think about the words that you're going to use. Like am I going to make them feel uncomfortable? That sort of person is a jealous friend and yeah like that's someone you should either cut off or if you can't cut them off you, you, like you need to start distancing yourself from them and ideally if it's somebody who you can't cut off if these are people who are friends for a reason like they're in your in your immediate environment and you can't get rid of them like you like you still have to see them every single day just limit your interaction with them don't let them seep into your personal life don't tell them anything <laughs> important and just keep things surface level with them. So that's the first type. Like the, the jealous friend who just looks at you funny. Like I'm now thinking of this example. Like and again, like like I'll laugh at other people's story times. But I remember being in a, in a scenario where um, actually it was an event once. Like if you go to an event or if you wear something nice, but but, but it, it could be brunch or anything just just any situation where you're looking a certain type of way if you walk into a room like people's body language tells on them 
if someone's immediate reaction is to frown when they see you looking nice, like take a mental note of that person. And I have been in so many scenarios where even it could be other people where somebody looks really nice, they walk into a room and then somebody's face just like changes. <laughs> I remember one of my friends describing someone <laughs> looking at her weird. She was okay, like like that friend does watch these videos that like, like, like you laugh when you hear this part but she but she described a particular woman's facial expression she was like like she was looking at me like, like she had just bitten a lemon like the people just look at you in that way and provoked like where their body language you know shows you what they're thinking before their words start to be very wary of people like that so yeah anyways let me not delve too much on the jealous friend it's kind of self-explanatory the second type of friend this is the Nollywood villain type. Like, all my days, you guys, like I said, I am 31 years old now. These are dangerous people. Like, these are the ones who, <laughs> like, if you're a Zambian, you remember that video? Like, that video used to send me. If I find it, I will add it here. But if I don't, just know that, that I failed to find it. But, like, okay, like, if you aren't Zambian, like, it won't even be funny, but for the Zambians, like, because we, we, could, we, could, uh, we could understand what he was saying. Like, it was so funny because he was saying it in Bemba. But some of you know the video that, that I'm talking about where um, some people will smile at you with their teeth. Like, they'll show you, you know, like their teeth. But <laughs> Kunuma, but look, biting. <laughs> I, I'm, like, I'm, I'm not even doing it justice. But yeah, but he was just saying, like, 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 if they're looking at you, like, they'll show you their teeth and they'll be smiling. But when they're behind your back, like, they're stabbing you, you know, in the back. But he um, used the phrase biting you, you know, from behind. But it, 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 it was just very funny when he said it. So, yes, this type of Nollywood villain is extremely dangerous, you guys. Like, these are the people who I fear. Because these are the ones who will smile at you but be plotting against you against you and they are very very strange people so the the telltale sign for this type of friend is someone who copies what you do <laughs> and i have another friend because like as you have probably established like, like I, have, I have a thousand friends but i had this conversation this is not like like i'm by the way like i'm not talking about one specific like each time i say i'm, I'm remembering a conversation i, I had with a friend like, like i'm talking about somebody else each time <laughs> But yes, um, and before I forget this point, because I will know I, I will forget it. Let me just tell you, people like me with with a th with a thousand friends, we are red flags. Let me tell you that. In as much as I try to be a, a good person, I don't represent everybody that has a thousand friends. Usually, somebody who has a thousand friends is a red flag. So that's so that's just like a bonus tip that I will throw in there. That be aware of people like me. <laughs> but let me continue. So yes, so I had lunch with a lot of my friends and were joking about this. Okay, I was laughing. She was just telling me a story. That was funny. But I knew exactly what she was talking about. And she and when she watches this, like, yeah. So, so this other friend will laugh when she, when she hears this because she's the one who was telling me about a friend who was copying her. And this was a, a friend for a reason. <laughs> yeah. Someone who was more like an acquaintance. It's like where like you open up to somebody you're telling them different aspects of your life and then you slowly start to realize that, that they're copying everything that you do. Those are scary. Like, like I cannot stress how scary these people are because they will sub like they will slowly sabotage everything that you do because they're trying to take you down. Like, I, like, like I'm not even exaggerating. Like I have seen these people <laughs> succeed in taking someone down and you won't know what hit you until it does. These are people who, like, it could be any area of your life, but the most common one is, like, taking you down when they want your man. And I know we say, um, uh, like, we need to stop saying, um, somebody stole my boyfriend or somebody stole my husband because why is a big person getting stolen like no he actively he actively participated in, like like he wanted to be stolen <laughs> it takes to like nobody holds a man at gunpoint but but okay i have seen some weird strange evil people actively sabotage their friends to end their relationships they may not necessarily get you know their husband or their boyfriend but they'll i don't know like like they find this weird joy and pleasure in taking down somebody who has something that they want but they don't have 
So if they see you happy in a relationship, like they would do all sorts of random things to take you down and sabotage your life. But usually, like I said, the, the telltale sign is people who copy you. All of a sudden, um, if you look nice or you wear a, a certain type of style, they're copying you. If you change your hair, you, like every hairstyle, like ev like every hairstyle that you're doing, they're copying you. <laughs> you buy a certain, I don't know, like item or clothing like what like, like it could be the the smallest things that you do but every single step that you make like they are right behind you and following what you're doing and copying what you're doing like if you have somebody who is copying everything that you do everything that you do be very very scared because these are the saboteurs <laughs> these i don't know like like they're they like i'll just leave it as they are those nollywood villains that movies are based on but yeah I don't want this video to be too long, even though like 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 I've surrendered and, and realized that this month's videos are going to be very very long. But I wanted to just touch on the saboteur, and you and how you have to be careful with, with that sort of friend who is just literally copying everything that you do. That's usually the, the deltos. Like, like like it's nice to be inspired. Like I am someone who, if my sisters or my friends look nice or they do something nice, I'm like oh my gosh, like that's so cool. You know, like it's okay to be inspired. But if someone is just weirdly copying you, and then also not just copying you, there are also those who will copy you and then act like it was their idea. <laughs> That's also like an added way to tell what type of person you're, 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 you're dealing with. Where something was actively your idea and they gaslight you into thinking it was their idea or, or they did it first. Like very, very scary people. And let me break this so that I, yeah, just a second, I'll be right back. Yeah, so I was talking about the saboteur. And then the th last type of person who I'll talk about, because like, cause like, literally I could do like a separate video on, on just types of friends to avoid, so I only do three. The last type of person isn't necessarily a malicious one. Like, they don't do this on purpose. They're very benevolent, very happy person. Like, these are people who might even be like your cheerleaders, like you have a good time, but these are friends who enable... Or encourage or just entice you into making bad decisions these are innocently very dangerous people and these are people you have to identify <laughs> the older that you get because if you keep them around you know for a very very long time like fam like it like like it will be detrimental to you so these are friends who might make you make bad decisions like for example, where money is concerned, like if they're constantly making you overspend, be in debt and the like, like where like you're constantly making bad fin financial decisions because of them, you need to start setting boundaries for yourself with these sort of friends. And they might be like the sweetest people in the world, but also just like, also just grow up, okay? And, and, and be a, a big girl or a big boy. And yeah, like just set boundaries and know what's good for you and what isn't. You could also be friends who encourage you to make bad decisions it, could, it, might, it might be financially it could be even just the way you interact with people who are close to you you know in other aspects of your life it could be how you interact with your parents how you interact with your siblings how you interact with your partner your spouse like how you in interact with your colleagues your boss like these are people who give you the worst advice and encourage you to make bad decisions <laughs> like if you know deep down that like you know like these aren't you know uh okay some sometimes you don't know because they're your friends and you think that, that they're giving you good advice but if you get to a point where you know that these people are dragging you down either but then again like they end up being like the, like, like like the sweetest people just set boundaries don't cut them off i don't think you should cut them off but just set boundaries for yourself and stop engaging in you know activities or behavior or you know, carry out, you know, certain things or decisions that are bad for you. <laughs> so yeah, that's the last type of friend, you know, who I would say you would need to get rid of. And then I said I was going to briefly talk about how um, sometimes you are the person who is a problem. And I feel like this is very, very important because it's very easy to always point the finger at other people in life. You could, it's like, 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 like it's so easy to think everybody else is the one who's doing wrong. Sometimes 
you are the person <laughs> who is a problem. Now, you could either, like there's only two options. If you are this self-aware and you want to do something about it, you could either change, okay? You could either change and, you know, like repent inwardly and be a, a better friend. Or if it's something that you feel really, really bothers you and you have gotten to a point where you seriously dislike this person and now you're the op, like, you, like you're the jealous one, you know, channeling bad energy towards a person, let them go. <laughs> Just release them and let them go and cut off that friendship. So either let them go if you feel like you're not, you're not about to change or change. Change, repent, and be a, a better person to this friend. And now the last thing that I want to talk about uh, friends who are keepers, because this is very, very important. <laughs> Whew, okay, like the heat. And here I am recording. I, I, I think it's probably 1.30 or an hour, close to 2, but it's still so hot. And I can't record these videos with my fan on because like it would be noisy. But whew, like, 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 don't worry, like I'm almost done. I'm wrapping this up. But yes, when it comes to friends who are keepers, like I said, me being a friend or me having accumulated a thousand friends, I absolutely love the friends who are here in my life, like, like who are here in my life. Like you guys, good friends are important. I know there's some people who are extremely introverted. They don't need to rely on, on others to survive. A, a lot of us are, you know, like regular human beings who need community, who need companionship. I know every, okay, like some people want to make it out like having a husband is like the best thing. Like, and that's the ultimate companion to have. I agree. It's, it's nice for some people, like, he, like that's somebody else's video and, and they've explained why <laughs> that's beneficial to them. But I feel like, you know, it's also good to have really, really good friends, okay? Because, like, 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 especially boyfriends, like, boyfriends come and go. Like, yes, a husband, ideally, should be there for life. Some people's husbands are, are the best friends. That's super cute. Maybe one day I will understand that feeling. But from where I stand, like, I, like, I, like I can't sit and wait, okay, <laughs> to have good companionship when I get married. Like, I am a, like, I'm a whole 31 years old now. Like, I must just live my life, like, I'm without, you know, having good people in my life. mm, -mm. I absolutely treasure the friends that I have. I have family who I'm close to. Like, I'm very, very close with my siblings. Love my, like, like, like my sisters are, like, they're also amongst my best friends. I always say that. But there's still certain things that I can't tell my, like, like my sisters, like I have limits to the things that, that, that I can share with them. And that's why, like, like, like my friends come in. Like, like I have a friend cocktail. <laughs> Like I have friends who are great at this, friends who are great at that. And it's just a great balance for me that honestly, you know, is beneficial to me and my mental health. Like having a great circle of friends is something that I truly, truly appreciate. And I love that for me because some friends end up being your chosen family. Not everybody comes from a great family. Okay. <laughs> I do though. <laughs> and I, and I, and I thank God for my family, but I know other people who generally don't. And they rely on the friends that they found and the friends that they've, you know, that, that, that their best friends or the good friends that they've come across in life have become their chosen family. And it's so important to have that. It's so important to have that sort of bond and community with people, you know, who genuinely love you and are there for you. Like, please, I fully endorse that. So there's people there who... who not like, now my neighbor's dogs are raging. I'm so sorry. But yes... So there are friends who end up being chosen family. And in other cases, so I have some friends. So my childhood friends, like those are my chosen family. I have my family that I love. And then I also have my childhood friends, like those girls. <laughs> like, <laughs> I have found so many people who are sparkly and new and been infatuated with new friends. But let me tell you, like, I always go back to those girls. Like, I even laugh. Like, like no matter how many times I will find somebody who's sparkly and new and bond with them, like, my OGs are my OGs. Like, I always, like, sometimes when things, it, like, yeah, like, I'll go back. Like, like, they're always there for me. I'm always there for them. Like, we'll always have each other, even though we are very different people. We have different interests. And that's why, like, I laughed in the beginning, like, when, when someone said, if you met your childhood friends today, like, would you be friends? Like, honest, okay, in my case, the answer is no, because we don't even hang out in the same circles. 
outside of ourselves. Like I walk a very different path. Like my childhood friends have different interests, but they are my chosen family. Like 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 we're close in that way. Like they're like, like they're basically like my sisters, you guys. When we're together, when we're chatting, like we have this deep bond. Yes. So some friends like the friends for life, some of them I categorize as as friends who end up being your, your chosen family. And then there's other friends who end up being the loves of your life, okay? Who end up being your soulmates. It's not always a romantic partner. And I don't know how many times people need to say this, but it's so true. It's not always a romantic partner, you guys. Like, sometimes you will miss out on a truly great experience. Chase <laughs> man. Yes, that's like a totally different thing. It's super, like, like, like I know it's great and everything, but don't sleep on good friends because you could actually have a great life. Like you, like you could have a friend or have a friendship last 50 years and that person could be your soulmate. That person could be the love of your life. Okay. And they're just your, like, 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 like they're just a friend, but they will truly make you happy and make life worth living for you okay and them as well because they're supposed to be mutual so yeah that's my video about friendship i don't know if it was coherent i honestly hope it was <laughs> i hope you learned something i hope i entertained you in one way or another but for the most part i hope these are educational and you know something that you can learn from in a good way and help you you know heal or just deal with certain things Maybe hear someone say it out loud. Maybe you've been battling with so many thoughts. Somebody, you, you, you have a friend that's stressing you out or, fr or friend groups that make you feel awkward and strange. Hopefully this will open up your mind and help you do what you need to do if you need to get out of certain friendships. Or if you're someone like me who just, you know, loves to hear, you know, friends get put in a pedestal, help, who just love to hear, you know, like friends, um, yeah, just be highlighted and, and and appreciated. I hope you are happy <laughs> hearing someone just talk about the value of friendship. And yes, I will end the video here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon in a week's time in part three. Bye.